The Boys Season 4 has been very, very controversial recently. A lot of... I think it's actually the most polarizing season so far. Which, honestly, I kind of I kind of understand. But also, like, it's mostly because of the politics of the season, which feel a lot more not subtle. I mean, it's not... It, this show's never been subtle. Even in season where I think... Even at its most subtlest, it was not subtle. It's like telling the loud-ass kid to quiet down. He just always just... He just like whispers, but whispers loudly. That's basically the same thing. That's, and I'm really surprised that people didn't catch on till now. And that's the thing that I've really been noticing because after these three episodes, it's actually really low. Like people have been very mixed, and I don't know. I, I don't think they'll be very mixed about episode four though, because episode four has been fantastic. And honestly, spoiler alert. And honestly, also this is by Ty Japs episode two and. And yeah, honestly, episode four of The Boys was fantastic. And it's mostly because of the highlight on Homelander. I do wish there was actually more on Homelander because I wanted to see some flashbacks or like an animated sequence like how, uh, what's his name? Like how Black Noir got his own animated sequence. So I wish he got the same thing, you know. I, I, I feel like Homelander, Homelander's backstory, as much mystery it's delved into... There is some, you can tell that history is lived on his face. That's the thing that's so well done about Anthony Starr as Homelander. You can tell the absolute hurt he feels. Just It's just written on his face. You don't have to go back and yap about your entire backstory. He does do that sometimes, but there is definitely just this face of unloving nature on his face. And you can tell the absolute roots of where that comes from. Which, we can talk about Homelander in a bit. Because there's a lot of other stuff that's there in this episode, and it's absolutely fantastic. Where, like, a lot of Huey in this episode, which I'm really glad about, because he should be the main character of the boys, but no, it's actually Carl, Carl Urban's um, Butcher, which I love Butcher too, but it's cool to see Huey actually get in fights and shit. Like, he, I didn't know he had the kind of hands. I didn't know he can move around like that. Like, I'm mean, really surprised and really proud of him. And Kamika really taught him well to slash, like, the wrists and... He really, like, disemboweled him. And he also caught him in the neck. Man, dude, it's cold. I expect to see TikTok edits of Huey. Because, man, that was cool as shit. And, and what else was cool as shit? It was probably, like... It's probably the fact that Butcher might be a soup again. And I don't know. That's really interesting. And I don't know what kind of powers does he have. The dude, like, ripped apart. He blacked out and ripped apart that guy. In a split second. I don't know what happened. It was crazy. And I don't know what he... I don't know what kind of things he's going on. But if he is that kind of power. Then, oh man. That is crazy. And I also think this is also one of the more bloodier episodes. This show has tons of bloody episodes. But man, this show. This episode was bloody. Jesus. And yeah, it's just a lot of stuff going on. Like Starlight. Oh man, Starlight. Uh, that stuff that they had going on her and um sis not sister sage but i mean sister sage was a part of that whole plan but also um firecracker firecracker was just the face of the plan but sister sage was the brains of the entire thing which the thing about that's so interesting is their whole beef with firecracker and starlight and starlight man oh man they exposed a ton of shit it's mostly like more personal stuff they really delved in there which man they're dirty they played dirty in that one and man firecracker firecracker is just like a different breed of what the fuck are you doing like 28 with a 15 year old why why the 15 year old man there's there's other older people why the 15 year old you're fucking you're pushing 30 god damn it yeah I don't know. it's so gross i don't just, i just don't understand it <laughs> why the young ones oh, it's whatever but she really played that off like nothing that's crazy i don't know I don't, I don't want people to be simping over her either. I don't, I'm like, I don't understand it. I don't understand why people are simping over Sister Sage. And I was, oh, man, not Sister Sage. I don't understand why people are simping over Firecracker. I mean, yeah, why? Just why? There's Kamiko and shit. Why do you have to do this? It's whatever. But, yeah. Sister Sage is also awesome. She's always awesome. And honestly, I get it deep. I really do get it. <laughs> it's just so funny how she basically needs the deep as this as this sort of like escape you know because that's the only way she can do and handle herself is through escaping with the deep 
who is probably the most brain rock character in the entire show which is so fun she 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 basically her break though how she can relax is through brain rock which is so funny that's why i love sister seiji even more and actually i was surprised in this episode with frenchie and how he actually got a good amount of stuff to do as well and i'm actually glad that they explored more of what he's done and explored it's really paid off a ton of what this show has been going for, not show but what this season has been going for with him and that guy and really exploring that fucked up nature that he had before and i don't know how they could like handle it and i don't know how they're gonna do it again and fix it all up I don't think it is repairable. We'll see. I don't know if they will fix it up, though. And honestly, I don't think Huey deserves it. But I feel like the theme of this entire episode has been forgiveness. Forgiveness one way or another. Like, Huey forgiving A-Train, which, oh my god, A-Train's on an a redemption arc. Good for him. He is running in the right direction, literally. And Homelander actually having his own forgiveness thing. Which, yeah, forgiveness, forgiveness, and forgiveness. Oh yeah, also what's her name? Um the main reason why Firecracker is just absolutely on a tirade is so tirade on Starlight is because she had no forgiveness for her. Whatso whatsoever. And then there's Starlight who I mean she feels hurt, obviously. Not because obviously because like abortions and shit, you know. I mean that's tough, you know. That's definitely tough. <laughs> Man, that sounds terrible. Why can't why can't I sound like MPJ on that um Lana Rose podcast? Oh god. Not no. I sound like, yeah, no, neither way. He neither way. He's MPJ on his on that podcast with Lana Rhodes, and she was just having like this deep moment. And then I just say, "That's tough. That's tough." I mean, well, <laughs> that's, uh, that's terrible. My bad. My bad. Ah, I slipped up. But yeah, that's the thing. That's so um, the thing about Starlight's thing, oh, that, that thing. That's terrible. But her whole storyline about trying to basically, trying to basically stand up to these people who will do whatever dirty book. And anything they'll do to win. She's trying to do the same thing, but I don't think she's working it all that well. And especially since these people are so unhinged. Like, they don't care. That's the thing, because from season one, you can you can basically try destroying the reputations, but now people when people will support you thick and thin through everything you've done, then that's kind of a problem. Especially when it's like Homelander, where even Homelander is kind of like tired of this shit. Which is so funny. Like speaking of Homelander, man, oh man, let's just get to the topic of the day. Homelander, Anthony Starr's Homelander deserves all the awards. Facts. I don't know how that works with the voting shit with Emmys, but man, he deserves a ton of awards. He should have got a ton of awards before, but man, once the show ends, he deserves at least something. Because the dude's awesome. He's an awesome actor. And I really admire his work here on The Boys and here, not here, but with um banshee he's great at banshee you guys should watch that show he's fantastic if you love homelander if you love anthony star you want to see more of anthony star watch banshee man i'll i'll be their marketing because god i love that show but anyways back to homelander this guy is just absolutely stellar fucking awesome character and i love this dude he he truly makes the boys as enjoyable and as um engaging as it is it's it's crazy how much this character is how much he means to this show that's why i can't see them kill off homelander until probably the final season probably around the end of the show he probably i honestly don't think homelander will die he probably will die like maybe halfway through season five i don't think he will last the entire season five i'm betting a doomsday season season five but we'll see how this season ends off but yeah i can't see the show without homelander and Homelander is just that guy. I just love his presence. I love everything about this guy. Except that he's an awful person. I love this guy, but I also hate him. Because he's terrible. But I love the presence he brings to the screen. Just fantastic, dude. Especially when he said, um... He was chanting about, um... <laughs> a winking. He, like, the, he's telling the guy to, like... Wink in front of everyone. And just, like, do it. And, and it was uncomfortable. And when he was staring at that other person, then he just... Like, you don't know. This guy is just... I think that's the beauty of this of this episode specifically. Like, you get this, like, this jolly guy where he actually seems like he wants to, the people to actually engage with him. But then you see the sinister nature under him, like, peeling back. And it reminds me of season one, Homelander, where 
obviously season two and three he's great but he's also a lot more um that peel back the mask part he's just unhinged he just lost all of it but it's in here he has absolute control which is so interesting he has control over it and you know he honestly he revels in their misery and it's so fun so fun to watch and it's terrible to think about because these people are probably terrible people too they created this monster and that's the thing you have to think about because you monsters are not created well they are created <laughs> they're not born they're made that's the whole mantra and here homelander is that example of what what a monster is and it's really the environment you're raising and that's why it goes in that shows the importance of superman's um origin you know and it really shows the importance of it and that's why it's just it's really sad to see home I don't, he is truly a tragedy but also he is responsible for his own actions which yeah it, it's just off like the dude got given everything in the world and he still takes it for granted and honestly uses it and it's just so fucking yeah i don't know home is just he's such an awesome character to talk about i can yap about this character the entire time but i don't want to make an hour-long video because editing that it sounds terrifying and Ah, that's so tiring. But yeah, overall, this episode is fantastic. Great performances, especially by Anthony Starr. Possibly the season's best performance, but yeah, this dude's awesome, and everyone else did awesome. It's just a fantastic episode. Everything is um, smooth sailing. I, I I hope that this episode gets received well, because I think it's a great episode. Um, One thing, though, I don't, I'm not, I don't understand what's happening with Kamiko. Stuff seems okay. I just don't think her stuff so far has been really engaging. It's just in the background, and I don't understand. There's so many characters to balance out on this show. It's just like, wow. So many things going on at once. And I don't know how it's going to work out and how they're going to weave these all, all these plot lines together to make the finale seem very, uh, very cohesive and actually very well done. I hope it's great. And I really hope this season ends up being one of the better seasons for sure. So far, it's it's okay. It's a pretty, it's a really solid season, but we'll see how it works out for next episode five. And I'm really hoping for like a fantastic season. And it seems like so far we're getting that, and I'm really excited.